<laughs> Good evening, guys. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> I'm Bianca. I'm L12. And we are doing our, um, uh, we're going to do a few experiments this evening. Um, the first is going to be um, involving what? Tie dye. It's called tie dye milk. Tie dye milk. milk. <laughs> and your ingredients that, well, ingredients that we'll be, we'll, we will be using uh, food coloring. We have four different colors for uh, some variety. So we're going to be creative. Q tips. Um, dish detergent. We used. And a dish that is shallow. A plate or a bowl, but it needs to be shallow. Mm -hmm. And more likely to be white, so you can see the see the. Mm -hmm. Also, real important when you choose your milk, make sure that the milk is two percent or full fat. Otherwise, you won't get the intended effect. So where we start is we're gonna pour the milk into your shallow dish. Mm -hmm. You don't want to fill it up just enough so that you can see the effect. The whole base of the plate. Okay. This will probably have to lift it up so we can see. You can't really lift it all the way up, guys, so you spill. But the whole base of the plate is full. Is full. You want to start with the color? Mm hmm. So while I do the food coloring, at toi, I'm going to prepare the q tips by dipping them. Really submerging them well in the dish detergent. And I'm just putting a few drops into the milk. Um, it's important that you put a lot of food coloring into the milk. And you can do different colors. And let's see if we can. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the camera over here too so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So about, I'm giving about seven drops of each color into the milk. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I have my yellow, my yellow, my blue, green, and red. And Atwa is making sure that our Q-tips are very damp with Dish detergent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should you hold it up so you can see? Mm -hmm. You do too, I do too. Okay. So you, you can see, I want you to be able to see when she puts those Q-tips mm -hmm. in there. Perfect. Okay. All right, so, guys, we're going to stick these Q-tips that are completely submerged or saturated with Dawn. I'm just going to stick it right down. I'm not going to twirl it or anything. Okay, and so it's kind of doing some psychedelic colors. And Etoile's going to add hers. On the other side. And you guys see how the colors seem to be kind of running away or um, repelling from the dish detergent. And this effect continues no matter how many different times you place it. And the more you move it, the more the color moves. And that's why it's called tie-dye milk. Mm -hmm. Oops. Really cool experiment for kids. All right, so explaining the science behind this. Um, the food coloring is in, the food coloring we put in 2% milk. And because of the, the fat that's in the milk, the, the soap, ugh, the bonds that are in the soap hold on to the fat in the milk. And these bonds are so strong that the water and the food coloring are pushed out. So the water that's in the milk is pushed away from the food coloring. So everything else that's all the other vitamins, minerals, and things like that seem to dance around and those molecules are what make the food coloring look, look appear to be dancing. Um, so guys, it's very, like we were saying, it's very important that you do use 2% milk or whole, completely whole milk. Um, if you were to use skim milk, the dish would not have any fat, the dish soap would not have any fat to bond with, and the food coloring would not be pushed away. Um, so there are different types of things that you can do, like you can use half and half, or you can use condensed milk or chocolate milk or a heavy cream, so to kind of differentiate, you know, your experiment. Well, what if you use this type of milk, or what if you use this type of dish, um, dishwashing liquid? Um, and that is all, that is about it. You know, so we continue to move. 
it continues to dance about and change as you touch it with the Q-tips. So as, as long as you apply the detergent to it, it will continue to change and move about. Cool, cool, cool. Cool beans. So, all right, thank you, Shay, for mm -hmm. assisting. So we're going to continue on to the next experiment. Is it on the camera? Or you know? Yeah, that's great. Okay. Pause it. Pause it. Welcome back. The title of this experiment is Float and Egg. Here we have three raw eggs, as you can see here. And we have three different solutions in this glass. We have plain tap water. To these glasses, we started with plain tap water and we added four teaspoons of salt. Make sure that when you do this experiment, the water is at least room temperature to warm in order to break down the salt crystals. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the salt won't actually do what it's supposed to do. The water will not be dense enough. Mm -hmm. So we start by placing the eggs in each container, each glass, and watch what happens. With the tap water, notice that the egg went to the bottom of the glass, it sank straight to the bottom. With the salt water solution, notice that the egg is floating in the water. We'll also do the same with this last solution, which is the same as this one. Both have um, 200 uh, milliliters of water with four tablespoons of salt. So they're both floating. Um, but watch what happens when we add fresh water. Um, for the sake of the experiment, it's food coloring. It's yellow or well, orange food coloring. And we're going to, I'm going to add it to this solution here. Watch what happens to the egg. So as I'm pouring fresh water on top of it, the egg, the solution, the salt solution in both of these creates um, a less, a more dense barrier around the egg, which causes it to float. So, with when the solution, the fresh water is poured on top of it, that more dense water that's on top of the egg pushes it down, so it kind of floats in the middle. So you can see the egg is literally in the middle of the glass here. Yep. Holding an egg, holding an egg. Thank you. That's what we did. Thank you.